Hey students, I'm so glad to be back with you this week. Today we're going to have Mac sharing out of Luke 24. And before we get into that passage, I have a question for you. Can you remember a time that you were just lost? The lostest you've been. Can you remember that? I can think of a time. When I was a little girl, we went to Chuck E. Cheese. And I know you're probably thinking, what is Chuck E. Cheese? Maybe you can think back to your childhood. It was a big mascot mouse. And I don't know why they would put a mouse in a restaurant, but that was their plan. And so there were games and there were pizza and it was a place that you would go as a child. Maybe you went there. I went there and I got amazed by everything around me. And then all of a sudden I could not find my family. I knew I was in a Chuck E. Cheese, but I was completely lost. And then all of a sudden, Chuck E. Cheese himself came and said, are you lost, little girl? And it was the scariest I've ever been. Thankfully, my mom did not lose me. She knew I was the whole time. And she came and said, you were never lost. I knew where you were. So maybe, as you begin to think about your story of being lost and what that looks like, we can remember that today as we dig into scripture, we're gonna hear about a journey. We're gonna hear about walking with Jesus and what does that look like and how um, that connects to our stories of being lost and found. Well, hello, students and leaders. It is so good to be with you again this week. My name is Mac. I serve on the Brentwood campus, and uh, we are uh, talking through a really cool series about what it means to truly follow Jesus. Uh, and you heard from Amy Jo just a little bit ago about the idea of, have you ever been lost before? Uh, have you ever found yourself in a place where you don't know what direction you're going? Along those similar things, I don't know about you, but I grew up, uh, if you remember a thing called a newspaper, uh, my family used to get the newspaper every single morning. And one of the things that I loved to do was obviously first read the comics, but secondly, there's always some word searches and some different games in there. And there's always a uh, game in my local newspaper growing up that had a maze on it. One that looked kind of similar to this. I don't know if you can see it on your camera or on your screen. Uh, but I loved doing a maze, uh, starting off in one point and working your way uh, to try to find the center of the maze to ultimately accomplish the game and succeed. Uh, it was a lot of fun. You trial and error. You run into roadblocks. You run into places where you kind of figure out, oh, no, I'm a little lost. But if I work my way back, I can ultimately find the way to go to get to the next level of the maze and hopefully by the end of it, to get to the center. And for some of you, you may feel lost. You may actually feel today, like in 2021, that you are in a maze. There have been parts of your life where you felt, oh man, I kind of went into a roadblock here and had to kind of work, my work myself back and then working through those experiences, you're able to find the next level or get to the place where you needed to go. For many people in scriptures, as we're going to read today, just like us, they find themselves in a maze of sorts as well. Times when they feel lost or they don't know where they're going to go. And so we come today, if you've got your Bibles, and I hope you do, we come to the book of Luke. And in Luke chapter 24, we find two disciples uh, that are actually walking on a road to Emmaus. And in Jesus' ministry, again, as he's working his way ultimately to his crucifixion, his resurrection, his ascension... People are hearing all about who this guy Jesus was and doing all these amazing things um, for people, healing the sick, uh, making the blind see, giving people food, uh, teaching them wonderful things through parables. All of these things in Jesus' ministry, people are just blown away. And so they keep asking themselves, who is this man? Who is this Jesus of Nazareth? Nazareth. And so we come to these two disciples, and Jesus actually comes to them in Luke 24, and they don't even recognize him. And they're talking and asking all of these questions. And if you look with me uh, in Luke chapter 24, they said that in verse 17, they were having a dispute, and they were talking, and one man named Clovis in, in verse 18 asked, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know these things that happened in these days? 
And Jesus, without them knowing who he was, he asked what things. And they said to him, the things concerning Jesus, who was a prophet, powerful in action and speech before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders land, uh, handed him over to be sentenced to death and were crucified, and how they were hoping that he was the one who was about to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it was the third day since these things happened. Moreover, more women from our group astound, some women from our group astounded us. You see, they arrived early at the tomb when they didn't find his body. They came and reported and seen a vision of the angels that he, had been, that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb. They found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see them. And here's the awesome thing. Jesus said, how foolish are you for you to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and to enter the glory, enter into his glory? And then they said, he said, Then Jesus, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted from him all the things concerning himself and all the scriptures. These men had heard all about who Jesus was, and they heard ultimately how he actually suffered at the hands of many, was crucified on the cross, but not only that, three days later had risen from the dead. And they're like, how can this be? How can a man do this? And they were lost. But what they did not realize is that Jesus had answers for them. That Even though they couldn't recognize him, that Jesus was going to respond in a way for them to see that the chief end of this thing called life, this maze, where ultimately we find ourselves sometimes lost or not knowing where to go or any of that, what they see is that Jesus is who he says he is, that all of life, all of scripture, all the things that they have been talked about point to him, for us to know him, that he is, throughout the scriptures, we see Jesus for who he rightfully is, right? That ultimately, Jesus is the one that was preached about in Genesis that was going to crush the head of the serpent, that was going to redeem us of our sin. What we see is that Jesus is the blessing of Abraham to all the nations. Ultimately, we see that Jesus is our great high priest, that Jesus is the one who wrestled with Jacob, that he is the lion of the tribe of Judah, that he's the voice of the burning bush, that he is the one that is the Passover lamb, that he is the kinsman redeemer that's talked about in the book of Ruth, that he is the one who is the good shepherd of Psalm 23, that he is the one talked about in Isaiah who was going to be pierced for our transgressions, that he was going to be crushed for our iniquities. Everything points to Jesus. So what is that for us? Is that this maze, this thing of life, where sometimes we're lost and we don't know where to go, this book, this Bible has the answer for us. And that Jesus knows exactly where we are. And as we seek his truth, as we pray to him, as we do life in community with other people, we'll get to see that he knows exactly where we are and that he loves us, that he's calling us to a life of restored fellowship with God by us trusting in him, by accepting his sacrifice on the cross, by when we announce that he is our Lord and Savior, what we do is that we suddenly become found, that the shepherd finds us, and that he takes us under his arm, and with his staff, he leads us to a place to continue to know him so that we can love him with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then for us in response to love our neighbors, we love ourselves. So my encouragement to you students today is this. Recognize that just like these two disciples and all their many questions, that questions are good. And to acknowledge that you're lost is also a good thing. But I pray is that as you read God's word, as you interact with his people through his church, as you pray to him, as you worship him, that Jesus is going to make himself so known to you in your life. And that when he becomes known to you, that chief aim, the center of the maze for you, is to glorify him and to make him known. I'm going to pray for us, and I pray that this story will help you know how much Jesus loves you. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for what you're doing and how you're working in our lives. We pray that as we walk through this life, as we try to figure out how to 
love you as we learn how you've made us and how we love people really well, God, that you will make yourself so known and apparent to us, that through the work of your Holy Spirit, you will help us discern, give clarity to our lives, but ultimately keep on illuminating things about yourself to us so that we know and we can feel your presence. And as we feel your presence, God, we pray that you continue to move us, to mobilize us, to go and to share this good news with every single person we come in contact with. And so, God, may each student, may each leader, may each person who watches this, may you move in a way that they cannot help but feel your presence so that we know we're not lost anymore. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and all that he does in our lives. And it's in Jesus' name, and it's in his name that I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys.